even if we believe the GDP number, it's quite true that it's a two-paced economy. Two-paced because the investment side of the economy is doing significantly better than the consumption side of the economy. Investment is growing at double digits for three consecutive years, which has never happened in India's history. And consumption is the weakest that we have ever seen barring crisis periods. I have a strong suspicion that the consumption numbers finally will be revised upwards, but be that what it may, uh, there is still going to be a gap. The issue, and Shireen mentioned this, that uh, whether India's growth will be consumption-driven or investment-driven. If you look at last two decades of India's strong growth, consumption used to provide 400 basis points of GDP growth on an average every year. So if investment was growing at 8 10%, we would easily get 7 8% growth. So it's important for consumption to come back to that level of uh, 400 basis point contribution to GDP growth. So the optimistic spin to this is that the investment growth that we are seeing now, that will create the jobs, the income, and the demand, and the consumption with a time lag. The pessimistic story is that if demand is not picking up, then ultimately the investment side will also suffer private capex growth will not happen. And that leads me to the investment side itself where there is a two-pace. Two-pace because the perception is that public capex is driving the entire investment growth and not private capex. When will private capex pick up? But interestingly, if you break the investment data, only 25% of investment comes out of public capex. 35% of investment is private capex, and 40%, the largest part of investment, is actually household capex. And household capex, in turn, is mostly real estate. I would argue that the public capex and the household capex is what is driving our investment growth now, with some support from private capex. But over a longer term, my sense is that we will not go back to the 38 39% investment to GDP that we had seen in the past. We are utilizing sweating capital much better than what we were able to do. Our productivity is much better. So even with somewhere around 35 36% investment to GDP, we should be able to generate the right kind of growth for us. And then lastly, within consumption, there is also a view that there is a K-shaped consumption. The top-end consumption is growing better, the bottom-end is not as much. I suspect what is going on here is that the cumulative inflation over the last four years have been more than 30%. So people who have got income growth of more than 30% are able to cling on to the consumption basket, grow their consumption. But people who have not got that kind of income growth, that's where the consumption growth might have suffered. There is one trivial way of presenting this through urban versus rural. I'm generally not too much in favor of that. Uh, in India, it's difficult to break this up in a watertight way. Uh, but going forward, our sense is that there are some headwinds developing on the urban consumption front where there are some tailwinds developing on rural consumption. So maybe this gap will converge as we move forward. Uh, but overall, if you look at it, the RBI is most likely to increase their growth forecast for next year, would probably be around 7, 7.5% growth next year. But the big question, and I'm not going to give an answer to this question as such, but just put it up in front of you, is that should we be happy with 7% growth? Informed decisions with comprehensive analysis on the go.
strengthen your portfolio with real-time market updates on the go. Create effective strategies with insightful expert opinion on the go. Grow on the go with CNBC TV18. Now streaming live 24-7 on YouTube.